um, is an award-winning painter, best-selling author of seven books. She's been a digital nomad for one year uh, and stories performed in New York City, uh, in Korea, in Guatemala, in Japan, in Bali. Um, Journey to Dodoland, an easing and website uh, with 22 million views. Bella, thank you so much for being here, um, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, great. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm I, going to do a little bit about dreaming. And uh, for me, um, I think about invisible, visible, and I think, is it an amazing thing that every human being has dreams? And we can look at the human being and we don't know what their dreams are. They're totally inside of us. And uh, the only way to make them visible is for the person to remember their dream and then express it in some way, either through art or theater or music or drama or whatever creative way they can think of. And all of a sudden the dreams become visible. So I wanted to share a little bit about um, a talk I did on um, making your night dreams, um, make, well, sort of manifesting them for global impact, which I've been doing for decades. And uh, I, I gave a talk on, on that fireside chat. And on the chat, uh, one of the questions that was asked by Stephen Levitt, who was interviewing me, the amazing, uh, um, host of two podcasts, Language of Creativity and Earth Mission. He was interviewing me and he asked the group something that I asked in one of my books, Dodola, what animal would you like to be if you were going to be some mythical or power animal of your own? And so the different people that were part of the group uh, replied and Bliss replied and she was hosting the uh, session and she said, I would like to be a Pegasus unicorn, a pigacorn. And I thought, wow, okay, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> and I love unicorns. And, and so it's not a surprise that, that that night I of the fireside, I had a dream of bliss on a unicorn ship. And um, so this is the painting I did, which is kind of a collage painting it was done just for fun but basically what it shows I've got it in behind me the original here I, I don't know whether I can really show this but here it is <laughs> um, yeah I did this collage um, about about bliss riding the unicorn ship and so this sort of set me up for the idea of uh, yeah you're right, Bliss is inhabiting the unicorn ship. So when I started to think about the unicorn ship, I, I thought about it, it, it being something that anyone can go on when they want to share their dreams, make their dreams from invisible within themselves to visible. And all of a sudden I got uh, some people in the belly of the ship and some people above the ship and some people around the ship. And I talked to the people that were at the fireside and uh, in the on the fireside chat, I'll, I'll show my slide actually of the different parts because it'll be hard to see it here. Um, but when you look at the different parts of the ship, it's there's one part with me and the, uh, on the, um, with the dream wheel and the dream wheel is my way of recording my dreams which I've done for 40 years and is, is documented in the book Dream Wheels. And people that I talked to that were at the fireside were also recording their dreams and were making art around their dreams. So I thought I would share a little bit of that. And I asked each one of them, would you like to be on the unicorn ship? And they said, yes. So it turned out that there is 33 people on the unicorn ship. Okay, we'll go to the next part. One part of the ship shows a little bit of my... Um, stories which come from dreams influenced by two cultures, the Indian culture and the Tibetan culture. The Tibetan culture uses um, a whole visualization of the chakras 
to be able to uh, come up with your story. And I've got different pictures of, of uh, from my stories here. And also Teo is in here because he uh, writes uh, poetry from his dreams and has shared that with the group, okay? Also in the belly of the ship, we've got, as Stacy said, I'm in the belly of the ship. <laughs> Bliss is asking, where are we going with this? <laughs> Yeah, you've got your own dreams. Uh, Stacy in the ship, she uh, actually is quite an incredible dreamer. She's been dream journaling for 12 years. And uh, she shared a little bit about, about her dreams with me. And it's, it, it's sort of interesting that she, she works with the Jungian philosophy, which Jung was so incredible with with thinking of dreams. Also in the belly of the ship is Selva, who is also really into dreams. And she actually creates visionary uh, sets, theater sets from dreams. Um, and I spoke with her and she was in uh, Florida at the time. Uh, and uh, uh, Amanda Sage, of course, has created this incredible dream vision of the vision train. Uh, that is going not only for her, but for many other people who have their dreams and they're painting their dreams up. Uh, Luana De Angelis also spoke to me about dreams. She's writing a book and she's included dreams in her book. Um, and uh, she's very into dreams. Uh, I was happy to hear that. She's done the Thrive thing, of course. And there's other people there too. Oh, we've got John and just go back to the other slide for a sec, because I've got to mention John and Dennis. John and Dennis, John Van Demeter and Dennis Moore mentioned at the fireside that their whole life's work, their whole sort of why they do their work came from dreams. Uh, John had a dream of a truncated uh, octahedron, and that changed his whole idea of, yeah, I should get into the geometrics of it all. And... Uh, and so I've got it. And Dennis has got a dream about saving the earth. Okay, well, go to the next one. I've got to move through this quickly. And these are some of the people that are colleagues who, who, who were at the fireside. Irene, Vincent, and Tony Wilder, and Alice Brownlee, and Raimondo. And these are some people that are dream producers. Um, David Walsh, Nora Burford, Sequoia Sun. Let me use her incredible... Uh, um, uh, uh, radio Laras in an installation that Ian McIntosh did. And uh, that was in the last new arch thing. And that became a dream. And there's Geo here, Mantis, and of course, Irana, who just showed you, uh, who said she did a painting that from a dream. So there are many people with dreams. I think we have just one more slide. Um, Dale Bertrand, of course, is my husband who supports my dreams. Julian Romanis last year made a my dream story come true uh, with an animation. And Alicia, of course, is doing her dream work in the, on the vision train. Uh, Simone, uh, who's in Switzerland, she actually uses her dreams for healing. And uh, her and I actually had a similar, I had a dream and she had a meditation that was the same, almost at the, at the same time. It's incredible what you can do with dream. This could go on. I think we've just got one more slide. And then this shows everybody together. Here we are dreaming. Let's dream up lots of things. Um, let's make the invisible of dreams visible. That's what I, all I've got. Thank you. <laughs> Bella, thank you so much. This is so, um, and how we can co-weave our dreams and, and right. not have a community in the Zoom digital, but also in the astral. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> you can go anywhere in your dreams, any place in the world and beyond, and you can meet anyone you want to. And I think it's like a co-weaving of, of multiple stories and multiple uh, branches and, and uh, fruits of... Absolutely. Of <laughs> That's what's neat about it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, Thank you. I'll pass the mic on to Marv. Um, Marv, thank you. You're... You have the baton.